Hey, what's up guys? I'm Theo Joe, and recently I bought the Razer Stargazer webcam, which on paper looks like it could be the best webcam on the market right now. But how does it perform in reality? In this video, I'm going to show you exactly that, and we're going to figure out whether this webcam is trash or treasure on my new rating scale from literally trash to literally treasure. Now, before we get started, let's go over any review disclaimers. First of all, no, this is not a sponsored video. I bought this webcam myself. And if you want to check it out, there's a link in the description. It's an Amazon affiliate link, which will help me be able to afford to buy future products to review because I do like to review products I've bought myself. So enough rambling. Why don't we get started off with the specs? Now, the Razer Stargazer webcam itself appears to be a rebranded version of Intel's SR300 webcam, which is their RealSense developer kit. This is capable of resolutions of 1080p at 30 FPS and more notably 720p at 60 FPS, which up until now was unusual for a webcam to have that high frame rate, although it still is only at 720p. And the other big feature is that it has dynamic background removal using Intel's RealSense technology, and it's one of the only webcams on the market to have that technology built in. It basically can detect the depth of the scene of different objects and separate you from the background and then remove the background. This technology also allows for some other features such as 3D scanning and hand gestures. For audio, the camera has a dual array microphone, which basically means there's two for stereo audio, and it has noise canceling built in. The camera also connects to the computer with USB 3.0 and lists Windows 10 as a requirement. So if you have Windows 8 and Windows 7, you might not expect this to work. Now, those specs promise a lot, but does it live up to the hype, and is it worth the $150 price? Well, I found that it is strong in some points, but also has some major issues. So I'm gonna go over all of those, of course. First of all, I'll say that the build quality is great. It appears to have both metal and plastic instruction, very sturdy, very solid. It's got a hinge that secures it to the top of the monitor and also a screw mount on the bottom if you wanna put it on a tripod, and it's got an articulating head to adjust the view. It also comes with a thick braided USB 3.0 cable, which feels nice. On the front of the camera, you can see it has all sorts of different sensors. First of all, there's an infrared sensor, as well as a regular camera and a laser projector. All of these will help determine the depth with that RealSense technology. Now let's talk about regular video quality, and later on we can talk about the background removal. Now I found the video quality to be good and sometimes great depending on the lighting mostly, and if you're streaming, the 60 FPS frame rate is a nice touch, although that is only at 720p, but if you're using it just for a face cam that's gonna be scaled down, that's good enough. If you have good lighting, like multiple lights in front of you, the video quality is very good. However, in low light situations, sensor noise was very noticeable. Especially in 720p, it could get pretty bad without lighting. In 1080p though, it was much better for low light because with the 30 FPS, that means a longer shutter speed and it can let in more light. But of course, at 1080p, you're only at 30 FPS. Now, of course, for any webcam, sensor noise is to be expected with such a small sensor. And I will say that overall, it performs pretty well for what it is. Now, one big issue I had with this webcam is the video appeared to flicker every once in a while for no apparent reason. It's like the video either cut out for a second or flashed white for a second and then would come back. It's very annoying and seems to only stop when I disable auto exposure. And that brings me to my next issue, the webcam controls are pretty lacking. To control the webcam settings, you use Razer's Synapse software, which has sliders for contrast, gamma, saturation, all that sort of thing. But apparently none of these have automatic setting except for white balance. Though just a few seconds ago, I mentioned that I disabled auto exposure, so you might be wondering how I did that. Well, strangely enough, if I go into the webcam settings in OBS, or XSplit and dig into those settings, I do have an option to disable or enable auto exposure. So why the heck is it that I can't control the auto exposure in Razer's native app, but I can in third party programs? And on top of that, when disabling auto exposure and manually bringing the exposure level up, it severely drops the frame rate, which doesn't happen with auto exposure. So it's effectively pointless to disable auto exposure, which is a shame because I like to have that manual control sometimes. And there also doesn't seem to be any option for manual manual focus either. Another thing I found in the webcam controls is when you use the slider to adjust them, the controls will often freeze for several seconds. I'm not really sure if that's an issue with my computer, but I doubt it. These all seem like software issues that I'm sure they could fix, but it's still very buggy and frustrating. So now let's get into the Intel RealSense features, which are neat, 
but kind of took some hoop jumping to get working correctly. When I first went to use the background removal with XSplit, it said that I didn't have all the necessary software installed and directed me to a post on their website. On XSplit's website, they listed some different things I had to download, including the Intel SR300's depth cam manager, which is the webcam that the Stargazer is built upon. And I also had to download the Intel RealSense SDK runtime. None of this is mentioned anywhere in the guide that came with the Razer Stargazer, but I did eventually get it to work. I should also mention that the background removal does not yet work with OBS, only XSplit and some other programs. And that is the fault of OBS, they just haven't implemented it yet, even though they can. So just keep that in mind. So once RealSense was ready to go with XSplit, how well did it work? The answer is, well, not necessarily bad, but I wouldn't call it good either. As you can see, it is able to recognize my general shape somewhat well, but the edges look very jagged. It desperately needs some sort of way to refine the edges of the mat it produces. Because at this point, it basically looks like a really crappy green screen. Now, if you're gonna be scaling it down to a little corner of your stream, for example, of course the edges aren't gonna look as bad. But movement still produces splotches all around you, especially with your hands. And it seems that the depth sensing camera only has a resolution of about 640 by 480, so the transparency mask is considerably lower resolution than the regular video. And this is likely the reason for why there are such pixelated edges. So I think this would be fine if you're just streaming for fun, although I would honestly probably just end up using a regular square webcam view. With the background removal, it just seems distracting and ugly when it's cutting off or adding chunks to the side of your face. And for a serious or professional stream, you just can't beat a proper green screen. Now, the RealSense technology is not just used for streaming, but is actually usable with other third-party apps. For example, there's a program called 3 d Me, which lets you scan your face and then add it to different 3D characters. And it's, well, interesting and terrifying, but ultimately a gimmick. Now for audio, the Stargazer has what it's called a dual array microphone system, which is basically just two different microphones on either side for stereo audio. And for a webcam microphone, it's definitely not terrible if you have nothing else, although I do think it sounds very hollow and tinny. Let me give you a sample so you can hear. This is a microphone test of the Razer Stargazer. I'm sitting about a foot and a half away, so hopefully it sounds good. I'm talking at a normal volume so you can judge for yourself. Of course, you can draw your own conclusion, but I would still say that you'd probably want to opt for a dedicated microphone. So overall, I may have sounded very critical of this webcam, and I guess I was. While the hardware and video quality are good, I found the software to just be buggy and frustrating. I'm referring to the laggy controls, for example, and the lack of auto controls. And the flagship feature, the background removal, sounds good, but is ultimately disappointing in practice, I found. It's impressive technology, no doubt, but it's not magic. So where does this webcam stand for a rating? Well, with zero being literally a piece of trash from a dumpster and 11 being literally a piece of gold, I would put the Razer Stargazer at around a five. It's really a toss up on whether or not to buy it, depending on your needs. With a price tag of $150, it's difficult to justify unless you really need background removal and are not willing to set up a green screen. Though to be fair, the RealSense technology at least does have other applications besides gaming. So if you're looking to do something like scanning 3D objects, this might be what you're looking for. So if you do wanna check this out, again, I'll put a link in the description so you can find it on Amazon. And that's really all I have to say about it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this review. If you did like this video, definitely give it a thumbs up so I know you enjoyed it. And let me know down in the comment section what you think of the product, what you think of the video in general, if you want me to do more reviews, stuff like that. And you can also follow me on Twitter and let me know what you think over there as well. If you wanna continue watching and check out some other videos like the unboxing of this webcam, you can click on these annotations even if you're on a phone, it's a new type of annotation, so that's pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe because I make new videos at least three times a week. So thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.